Okay, so Dave, you wrote me an email and the, and the topic here um, has to do with a belief or maybe set of beliefs that you would like to get beyond. They limit you in some fashion. Yes. And I asked you, I asked you in an email, what belief would you like to address? And you, what you wrote, you, I have other questions here, but the answer to that question was, I am worthless. I am not loved. I am hated. Okay, so we're going to go through that. Carrying that kind of thing around throughout your life can be expensive. <laughs> yes, very and expensive. I, I guess you've recognized that already. Yes, yes. Okay. But what we're going to do here, I think, is get a good start. This is the big, wide thing, the a self-image issue that we've carried around for decades and decades and decades typically doesn't go away in moments okay yes well possible i guess but we need to look at it realistically we're going to get a good start here you are um you are very familiar with our advanced tools yes. so what i want to do is get you a really good start so that you can start launch you into those really good tools and you can go further and further and further and further with it that's the idea right right so to do that to do that, I want to start start with examining what's behind this I am worthless, I'm not loved, I'm hated kind of thing. We want to take that apart, do a little reframing along the way and so on. But we really got to look at the issue itself before we bring in unseen therapists. Okay. Okay. So question here again, I will say the question was, what belief would you like to address? That's my question. Your response is, I am worthless. I am not loved. I am hated. Okay. So let me ask you, are you, if I were to take a poll mm -hmm. of everybody you know, have ever, ever met, even people who know you really well and people who know you because you shop at their store kind of thing, if I take a poll, how many of those people do you think would say Dave is worthless? <laughs> Not very many. Well, uh, I mean, uh, you mean percentage? Uh, uh, maybe 10, 20 percent. It's it's. And as I understand it, Gary, it's an illusion that I've created those things that you mentioned out of the way I was treated by my parents, peers, and siblings. Yeah. Okay. But we're gonna we're gonna. I want to get to that a little. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. We, understood. Understood. What I want to get to is many times people who have a which who have self-image issues, and almost everyone does to one shape in one form or another. Right tends to generalize uh, somebody doesn't like them or they got the notion that they feel worthless from some place and they sort of generalize like i am worthless in the eyes of everyone kind of thing I, I am just generally worthless and that's all there is to it worthless 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 wherever i go i'm worthless yes and so the phrase that you use i am worthless suggests that now, you correct that, if you will. That's true? Not true? What? Um, well, it, it's true in the sense that, that I feel that, not academically, but I feel that because I feel ignored. I feel of no value uh, to different people. And it's a, it's a matrix or illusion that I've created out of having grown up in a family that was uh, um, bred in the depression and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got it. Well, what I want to get to and really cement if I, if I can, but I don't want to be inaccurate either. We need to really nail this down a bit, but I don't want to impose it on you. I want to know what's really there within you. Okay. Okay. So, your barber, you go, you get your hair cut sometimes, mm -hmm. and you have yes. a barber. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Does your does your barber hate you? No, no. Just 
Exactly the opposite. Oh, okay. So you, your brother really likes you. He loves you. He, he thinks you're a fun guy. What? Yes, he's a, he's a good friend, and uh, uh, he's now retired, so he cuts my hair in his home uh, uh, every three or four weeks, you know. But we're good friends and and uh, share times together and okay. so forth. All right. Well, to him, to him, are you worthless? Oh, no, no, no way. No. Oh, okay. So you, so you're not worthless across the board. You are worthless in certain specific areas or in the minds of certain people. Be more specific for me. Where okay. are you worthless? Well, with my, uh, I, again, this, this is the illusion that I've extended uh, and projected and created from the first 20 years of my life. Uh, but I feel worthless. I want to give a, a, a very um, specific example of this. Please, in, please. In my own family, <clears throat> I have two daughters, two wonderful daughters, uh, three grandkids, and now a great grandson. <clears throat> so I taught juggling, the art of juggling, hands on in public schools and department stores and so forth. So, of course, Grandpa was anxious to have my grandkids, a boy and two girls, come into the class. They did. They participated over a five-week period. And it seemed like everybody in the class, we're talking ages seven through 70, were in my classes. Everybody had a great time, raved about it, thanked me. Zippo from the grandkids, no interest. You know, they, they walked out without learning how to juggle at all. Whereas uh, I average maybe 10 to 20 people per class, and they all learned how to juggle to some extent, not my grandkids. And then in addition, taking the same example, when I taught uh, a spiritual modality, uh, two of them at least participated, and little interest, uh, um, never really thanked me, uh, you know, and they sort of drifted off like, uh, you know, that's grandpa's stuff. And so this, this happened not only with my grandchildren, but happened with friends and so forth. It seems like as if people didn't know me, <laughs> they got much more out of uh, whatever I was sharing, teaching, you know, so forth. Okay. Well, that's an interesting statement. Let me let me let me let me pick up on that a little bit. And, and again, we're exploring here. We really want to get down to something really tangible before we bring in unseen therapists. Okay. okay. So, so a lot of what we explore here may be not useful. Some of mm -hmm. it may. We want to pick up what's useful before yeah. we bring in unseen therapists. But okay. So I don't know what's behind the grandchildren not warming up. Let's say to the juggling thing. Let's just take that as an example. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe because of what you said, they know you better and they have seen you at times when you're not so happy, not the, not the happy juggler. Would I be right? You're right. Yes. Okay. Yes. There'll be time when you're grumpy in their, in their view, perhaps, and maybe you ignore them. Uh, maybe you have criticized them in some yes. fashion. Would I be right? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Well, I'm, to get behind that, if you're carrying around with you, I am worthless and I am bad and other, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that I'm aware of that your family hits you with over and over and over and over again during your formative years, okay? Until that all gets resolved, you are reflecting that within and things on the seeming on the outside, like your grandparents' be, grandchildren's behavior, would bring up some kind of criticism, some grumpiness, some everyday stuff. But then when you're in the classroom, you know, <laughs> the happy Dave comes out, right? And off we yes. go, and everybody else goes, yay, Dave, yes? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So what I'm looking for is their reason to not be so enthusiastic as the rest of the kids might. 
And that would be because they have undergone some, let's call it grumpiness by Grandpa Dave. Yes, yes. It's a uh, very good reason. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kid, no, and it, and it kids is. are kids, kids. They're not going to make it all up and say, oh, gee, you know, aren't I happy or everything? You know, it's sort of a, yeah. well, that's yeah. Grandpa, you know. But yeah, yeah just, just, just wait, just wait, you know. Next Tuesday, he's going to get in his grumpy state again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah? Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, do your grandchildren, are they cautious of you? Or do they hate you or something else? Uh, no, it feels like they're... Uh, it, it doesn't feel like they hate me, obviously. It feels like they're patronizing me, <laughs> you know, as a grandfather. Whereas their grandmother, they're like this, you know, um, and with their parents, you know, but not me. <laughs> yeah, the, grand, the grandmother being your wife. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Of 60 so years. Okay, so I'm gathering she's the stereotypical grandmother. Here's some cookies, and I love you, and 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 let's all play games together, and and never <laughs> ne always builds them up and never criticizes them, not grumpy, etc. These are my grandchildren. Oh, gee, I get to spend time with them because that kind of grandma, yeah. Yes, boy, you hit it on the head. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, we're trying to get to what's going on here. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, but behind all of that, getting back to you and not grandma for the moment, you have your reasons for, to use my term, being the grumpy, more critical, more not that easy to get along with guy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And we've talked about that abuse in spades as you were growing up. Yes. Okay. But just so I'm clear, this idea of I am worthless being a generalized type thing in the eyes of everybody is not true. It is a feeling you have within that maybe you think other people think that. But if I pin you down and say the barber and this person and this person and this person and somebody else and somebody else, you're going to say, no, no, they don't No. I'm not worthless in their eyes, but I, am I right? Yes, you are. Yes, you are, Gary. Okay. So there are, don't let me impose this on you now. I'm, what I'm trying to do is understand it well myself. So correct me. Okay. So it isn't a generalized thing. Everybody hates me. I'm not lovable at all. And I am worthless to the world type thing. It's more like in certain specific areas of my life, I don't get the love I want. I feel worthless, whether it's logical or not. But it really comes from specific areas of my life, which I'm tending to generalize over everything. Now, don't let me impose that. Tell me if that fits or how would you, how would you correct it? Yes, I, I can't think of a way to correct it. I think it's right on. Okay, all right. And I am academically, to use your term, <laughs> up here, I'm understanding that I am the one that have created these illusions, these projections about myself. The thing is, uh, uh, it seems like I'm automatically transmitting the energy non-verbally, you know, that's attracting this uh, negative reaction to myself. Good. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Let me ask you a theoretical question. Let's suppose that with unseen therapists and our work here, et cetera, we're able to just wave our hand and say, ah, all of Dave's grumpiness, say it differently, all of Dave's cause for his grumpiness, that is his abuse from earlier ages, which has not been totally resolved and so on, all that cause has now been gone. 
he does not need to project out. He does not have the unrest inside that just shows up in his world that grandchildren pick up, for example, and of <laughs> and others who Dave thinks don't like him or something. Okay. If that were to all go away and tomorrow you no longer needed, you no longer had this unrest, grumpiness cause within you. And you started relating to your grandchildren, for example, differently because of that. What do you think your grandchildren would turn around on that and start seeing you differently and re respond to you differently? I know we'd be guessing, but mm -hmm. what would happen? Yes. Yeah, I think they'd they'd uh, see me differently. Uh, what came up when you said that uh, scenario, so to speak, was that I would feel hypersensitive to them liking me more. It sounds like a contradiction, but that's the feeling that came up. It was, you know, if everybody, if my grandkids, as a specific example, as you said, Gary, uh, turned around and liked me more and more, I would sort of emotionally back off because now they're getting too close. Yeah, okay. Well, go, good, good, good feedback. Really good comment. And what I hear in there, again, always correct me, is that you are so used to having this grumpiness cause, that is all this unresolved input from your parents, abuse from your parents and so on. But to be without it is like you've lost an old friend or something, if you, if you were really without it. Okay. Yes. And then what would move forward center stage would be more of my anger projected. Why would that be? You know, if we resolved everything, if we, if, if we resolved, wave the hand, resolved all that stuff. Okay. Because it would feel uh, very tender, like I've been exposed completely, you know, uh, at some level. It would just feel very uncomfortable. Uh, and the way I would deal with that uncomfortableness is being angry, which has been my protective shield, you know, over a lifetime, you know. Well, okay, but all right. Good. Got it. Got it. So I understand. Angry, if you can tell me. At what? Um, I think at whatever would um, remove my uh, nakedness, exposure. In other words, it's a smoke screen. I'd get angry at, at the... Uh, somebody scratching their nose, you know, uh, because I don't, it'd be arm's length. It would keep me arm's length. Yeah. And, and not expose me to criticism, hurt, you know, fear, so forth. So now I, I'm, I'm reflecting what I think you said, but it's coming in through my belief filters and everything else. So again, you got to correct me, all right? Okay. So we wave our hand, we remove all of this, but you still need a protective shield. And this is part of my speculation now. We need this protective shield because you, number one, you're not, really used to it. Maybe it feels good, but you're wary of it. You're leery of it. You're, you're, you're not trusting it yet. And if you really let yourself into love, be genuinely loved and accept it, somebody can take that away from you and that's going to feel really bad. So you better protect yourself now because you don't want to get there because the bad feeling that's around the corner is really going to hit you. Now, how'd I do? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Because that's the way I've, I've lived my, had to live my life growing up 
uh, with my family <clears throat> is that as soon as something good happened and I felt good and felt happy, it was whammo. Here it comes. I'm going to be, you know, abused, uh, criticized, hurt, you know, and so forth. And to, uh, one recent example is uh, a lady who uh, I was uh, doing some training with. Um, she was saying uh, to our daughters, what a wonderful <laughs> person I was and so forth. And my re reaction was to hide from that and beat up on myself before I could be beaten up on. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dave. I, I can predict that most people watching this are hearing you and going, that's me to some degree. That's me. Yes. I don't want to put myself out there. I pursue love. Yes, I do. Romantic love is great. And this kind of love and love with a pet and everything else, you know, but I can love my pet. I can love my pet dearly. But my yes. pet's probably going to die before me. And then, uh, okay. And I don't like that. And, and so I can, I can have a lover or, or, or a spouse or something like that. And we're supposed to live happily ever after. But then it fades or they leave or something. And, uh, oh, that pain. I'll do anything to avoid that pain. Yes. Yes. It makes me want to cry right now when you say that. And it reminds me of Milton Berle, who used to, when the audience would applaud, he would call for more applause and hold his arm out at the same time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and th yeah. And that's a conflict we fought as human beings. We find ourselves in. We are pursuing love. We would love to have love and be in love all the time. Yay, yay, yay. Wonderful. But yes. let's be a little practical here, you know, and especially Dave as a young child, you as a young child, looking for love as all young children do, and your parents abuse you in every way you can be abused. And frequently, yes. mm -hmm. you are not getting that love, you are getting the pain end of it you're looking for love but getting the pain and looking for love and getting the pain how am i doing you're right on gary you're reading my mind okay <laughs> all right looking for love and getting the pain looking for love and getting the pain let me ask you this is kind of a theoretical question first of all i think it's possible and you and i have done some work on this in your past before that you can get with diligence completely beyond all this pain of your parents we're going to do some more work on that today with unseen therapists okay okay my question to you and i understand it's theoretical so just do your best with it okay is could you do you think it's possible for you to get to a point where somebody could absolutely love you and you could accept it without having to be, without having to not trust it, without having to worry about it being taken away sometime. Yes, I totally believe it's possible. And not only that, Gary, I totally believe it is necessary. I have come to this point that the time is now. And just last week, I got a brief email from a lady who said, uh, your laughter is so enjoyable. It makes me feel happy. It was on some kind of uh, Zoom thing. Anyway, I, I loved it. But I wanted to run and hide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, but the, the the feeling of it was really good. But yet there maybe maybe there's pain behind that someplace, and we want to avoid that. Yeah, I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> yes, yes, that's okay. it. All right, it's a conflict. It's a conflict, and you're not yeah. alone. Huh. I, I wish we had. I wish we, the audience would be listening to this. I wish I could. I could pull them right now and have them applaud. You know, because I, I think we would. I think we would get a standing O. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. All right. Now, I forgot where I was going to go with all that. Oh, oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. Now, this is something I think you and I have talked about before, but I want to, if so, I want to emphasize it again. It's one thing to have somebody say, you're so enjoyable, like this lady did, you know, and you felt really good about that. She just complimented you and everything else. Okay. That is you experiencing love from the outside. Compliments in this case, those are all forms of love in the human experience. Okay. Experiencing love from the outside, from somebody else. Okay. Experiencing love with the juggling class. Hooray, Dave, aren't you fun? You're experiencing love. It's coming from the outside. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Once it comes from the outside, your system, human systems go, oh, good. Our little ego does a dance. Aren't I wonderful? Aren't I wonderful? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. And on the other hand, you're saying, but it, it can't last. It can't last. We can only take so much of this. And, and you know, <laughs> right? Okay. Oh, yes. Right. Better. And this is where the real transformation takes place, is we learn to develop the love within ourselves. We generate love. And then we have control of it, by the way, when we generate it. Okay. If we generate it here, generate, 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 then whatever somebody does on the outside to give us love or take it away or whatever, that's, an, that's in their control, not in yours. Am I right? Yes. I mean, I, I love you, Dave. Yay, yay. Juggle, juggle, juggle. But I don't, I don't like how you smell or something. I, I made that up, okay? <laughs> hey, or, or somebody else comes along and rejects you. Or, or you get a letter saying from somebody that says, well, everybody else liked you, but I thought it was a stupid performance, okay? <laughs> and that hurts, right? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Can I mention about love? <clears throat> I, I've recently have been working, really, really working on, because I think it's such a fun idea that you express so well, and that is radiating love. Yeah. And I have been intensely working on And here's what, what happened. I walk into the car wash where I haven't been in a month, and the manager said, oh, is it good to see you? Boy, we really miss you. He, he wasn't just giving me a sales blurb. He was responding, I am sure, to the intense radiating love. And I walked into a store that was very busy holiday time. And, you know, the employees were busy stocking shelves. They had no time for anything rushing around. And I asked a woman one question. She dropped everything she was doing. She took me six aisles down in the store. She explained the product. <laughs> Gary, I've never... <laughs> That happened before, you know. All uh, right. All right. Because you've been working on radiating love that is generating love from within. Exactly. All right. All right. But let's explore that. Now you've had great. Thank you for the experience. Yeah. Wonderful. I think we can, I hope we can go someplace with that. Now, yes. am I right? But please correct me. I don't want to impose anything. All right. But am I right in assuming that? Your radiating love, your that is generating love internally, is something within your control and nobody else's. Correct. Okay. Correct. If let me ask you another thing. If you walk into the store and the lady who took you six aisles or whatever it was to help you out, if you were radiating love and she didn't pick up on that, and people do pick up on that, by the way, which is yes. likely what yes. happened here. Okay. Yes. If she said, said, said uh, I'm not sure where that is, um, and I'm a little busy now, I can just go find it yourself, okay? <laughs> All right. Yes, that's happened. Okay, well, previous to generating and radiating love, and somebody said that, do I guess correctly that you'd go, oh, I'm worthless, I'm not worth the time, that, uh, yes, I'm yes. not love, I'm hated. 
I got pissed off. <laughs> all right. Well, angry, whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Because she's not loving you and you've wanted love all your life. No parents give it to you. You get it bits and pieces from some places, but it's yes. not a permanent thing. And the reason it's not permanent is because you're not generating it. You're looking for it outside of yourself. Yes. Yes. And, and I, that brings up a very important point. As you know, in the Course in Miracles, it says, seek not outside yourself. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> and well, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> well, yeah, but every, everybody does it. Yeah. And by the way, including me, and I know better. Okay. Okay. I'm better at it than I used to be. <laughs> be better at pushing it aside and radiating love than I used to be. Yeah. But the more you practice it, the more it becomes part of you. And, and see, nobody can take that from you. Um, now, maybe on this particular day, this, when you wanted something and this lady took you six aisles or whatever it was, wherever, helped you out enthusiastically, um, there, a, a day may come if you continue radiating love. And we're going to do more work on that with unseen therapists, okay, before we're done here. Right. Um, but a, a, a good clue that you're really getting there would be you walk into the store, you say, I don't know where something is, and the person rejects you in some, in, 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 responds to you in some way you would previously considered rejection of some kind, okay, and get mm -hmm. angry and pissed off. You would just simply go, oh, okay. And that would be all there would be to it. You go go find your thing wherever it is. You know, people do that. Okay, um, you don't have to have people get enthusiastically, you know, fall fall to their knees at your feet uh, yes, necessarily. Yes. Okay, yes, um, exactly. but you get to a point where, well, okay, maybe she's having a bad day, and maybe you would smile at her or something, or pat her on the shoulder, or and going, well, thank you. You know, and going your way. You know, give her a little love for the moment because she needs it. Yes. She's looking for it outside herself, by the way. Yes. So yes. is everybody else you know looking yes. for it outside themselves. Everybody. See, you're looking for it from them. And they're looking for it from you. <laughs> 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 that is a recipe, Dave, for conflict. Yes. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> yeah. And you've been dealing with that in your way. Yes. yes. As have our listeners. Am I right, listeners? You can say amen. <laughs> ah, yes. <clears throat> All right. Here's what I'd like to do. I, I'm already assuming that this I am worthless, I'm not love, I am hated belief that we've already discussed and we realize it's got pockets rather than a generalized thing, but that whole thing that you're looking for out relief for which you're looking for outside yourself okay um we want to uh, i'm assuming before we ever did any of this reframing and all this talk we've been talking about a lot of it is reframing all the stories and everything else looking at it through a different set of glasses generated from within instead of getting it from without and things like that okay and i'll add another Another reframe, which we didn't put in here, but you and I have talked about, is your parents. Um, there's a cause for their critical, abusive behavior. And that is they didn't get love themselves in one way, shape, or form as they were growing up. They were abused in some fashion. And they had need to project it out, just like you're doing now. They don't have love from inside. They're trying to look for outside. You're in their way, in a way, because you're not doing things just the way you're supposed to, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's me rolling on for a little while. But, so, we're doing these reframes, and so I'm going to assume, unless you tell me otherwise, mm -hmm. that before we did any of this, your zero to 10 intensity on the I am worthless, I am not loved, I am hated phrase concept would be a 10. Yes, yes. All right. All right. I'm not even going to ask you what it is now. We're going to do our little thing and then 
I, what I want is to be for a measure. That's what I want. Okay. So unseen therapist has been listening in all the time anyway here. Okay. Always listening. Always giving us guidance. Problem is we're not listening very often. <laughs> <laughs> we're listening to our ego. The ego says, make that person out there love you or there's something wrong with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, unquote. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So the fact that we can laugh about it, that's that's a clue that we're heading in the right direction. Yes. So all right. Well, let's um let's bring an unseen therapist. Okay. Uh, I will narrate this um as we've done before. But let me let me invite you at any time as all this unfolds, if you have a um a thought come up. Or something that we're saying just isn't landing right, or something like that. Speak mm -hmm. up, say something. Okay. Okay. okay, because that's your input into all this. I'd really like to see this done three ways of three people: uh, you, me, and unseen therapist. Instead of just being me and unseen therapist in your behalf. Okay. Now you're not required to interrupt anything, but if okay. something shows up, feel free to. That's the way to. Okay. That's the way to say it. Okay. That's me talking a lot. Any questions before we start? No. No. All right. As usual, okay. Dave, I only know where, where, where we're going to start. I never know where we're going to end up. Okay. <laughs> I just I just sort of sit back and learn to listen, which anybody who wants to do our advanced course can learn. We'll just see where it goes. So if okay. you would. Close the eyes, close the eyes. Take the nice, deep, relaxing breath. We're gonna be here a little while. And just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, let's just align ourselves with her pure love, with a simple little loving moment. Just recall a loving moment in your own life. And whenever you're there, just nod your head. Okay, good. And just for those listening in, um, just recalling a loving moment, it's just a simple invitation. We are not, including me, at the ultimate spiritual love level of the unseen therapist. We don't have to be. We're just telling unseen therapists by recalling a loving moment. We're inviting you. We're gonna give you a little something to work on. Right? Um, it may or may not be a specific event the way we're used to doing, more of a reframe thing here, I think, seeing things differently. So, so we're gonna we're gonna give this to you, unseen service. We're gonna borrow your love, we're gonna let you work on it, hand it back to us, and go from there. That's all that is. So let's go back. Now I'm getting another notion. Let's um, imagine, Dave, sitting in a palace of possibilities, a big, grand palace where everything is possible, including every room you might want to go to into this palace would be filled with love, unconditional love, internal love, not love you're getting from the outside. You walk into one of these rooms and oh, there's nothing but just love that comes from within. You radiate love. This is what happens in this room. These are all radiating love rooms. However, in this palace of possibilities exists the room that you, are in. You're not in all those rooms. You have your own room. And you have carved this little room out in the basement someplace. And in this room, there is a door which leads out. You can go up some steps into the Palace of Possibilities and experience all the love that is out there. Every possibility, everything is out there. 
but you're in your own room and the door out of that room is un unseen therapist has unlocked it it is open you're sitting there in the room but you could anytime you want just get out and walk up the stairs and do all of this but but there's something holding you back gee if i leave this room which is my protective place it's the place where i'm i can i can experience love once in a while but it's the place that i don't trust the love out there i just don't trust it so i can stay here in my protective little room and in this room there's a lot of writings on the walls and these are your beliefs. Beliefs like I am worthless. It's written there on the walls. And all the time you spend in this room, you can see this writing on your wall, I am worthless. And so you know, you, you just you've been there for years, or so you just buy it. Okay. But then the door is open and you hear echoes from, you know. The rest of the palace of possibilities and maybe that's not really good writing but you're not sure yet you need to keep that around you need to have some anger about these things you need to have some way to protect yourself from all this love because you don't trust the love why would you why would you trust the love giving the experiences you've had especially as a child up through your first you know up through teenage and even age 20 or so, why would you trust that? So there it is, I am worthless. Now, let me ask you, Dave, look around on these walls and tell me what else is written on those walls that keeps you, what else is written on those walls that has been written there so long it just seems to be part of you. I'm laughing when you ask that question because the first thing when you ask that I saw written on the wall was three words. I love you. You yeah. meaning you or you meaning Gary? No, it was written in my room on the walls for me. I love you and the you being you being dave yes okay good well good i i'm presuming that means some of our reframing we did before even this being an enzyme therapist is somehow landing mm -hmm. does that seem right yes yes it it it, it um keeping that phrase on the wall that you first mentioned i am worthless is key to keeping me playing the role of victim yeah which is past but i'm still reacting that way yeah okay all right well thank you for that input because that just nudges me in a little different direction than i thought we were going this is good this is good so now you're sitting in the room and while there may be many things written on the walls, everybody has stuff written on their walls. I'm not good enough, for example, for some people listening in. I'm not lovable for somebody else. Maybe both, you know, I, I don't count. Uh, there's something wrong with me. And on and on and on goes the list that so many people have that they've developed, internalized over their years and still kicking around unresolved. But there you are with your versions of all these things including now i love you and maybe say i love you come a day would that work when we say what the last sentence i love you comma dave i love you dave yes okay all right now there you are sitting in this room the door is open you can, it's in the basement, you can climb up those stairs and all these other rooms with all this unconditional love that you resist because how can I let that in? Because it might be taken away from me. 
that's too much, too much good joy and everything else to let in because the pain behind that, oh my God, is that ever bad, ever bad, okay? I want to go back to my original room. Yes. Go ahead. You said about coming up the stairs from the basement, that was a trigger <clears throat> because the best friend I had was when I was eight years old, the best friend I've ever had was a janitor in my dad's store. His first name was Brookie. And uh, right after he made me a wooden airplane and he often did things like that, he was in his 70s, I was eight, and he was always making things and playing with me, you know, in off moments in the store. And this one day, he made a wooden airplane and, you know, made it fly, so to speak, by hand. And he said, now you better go up the stairs and go outside. I've got to pour some chemicals. And I went up the stairs. And when... I got to the backyard, I heard a big bang, and but I shut it off. I couldn't hear it because some part of me knew what happened. And what happened was he took his cigar and put it down. It was a lit cigar as he poured the chemicals for the high school chemistry class. And it exploded. It killed him. It destroyed the store from the first floor. It destroyed our apartment upstairs. Uh, and the only thing we had left, the family of five, were the clothes on our back. Nothing else, because my dad was underinsured. But most important, I lost Brookie. He was gone. Gone. And I still have trouble with that. Anyway, well, I picked a great metaphor, didn't I? Yeah, yes. Yes. I'm not sure where to go with that, but my guess is that, that was picked. I was nudged in that direction for a reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm hearing for a reason is you don't ever want you don't ever want to get close to somebody like Brookie. You don't ever want to have that kind of friend. Because look what can happen. Yes. Yeah, I see the I see the tears now. Yes. Okay. And that's expensive. Yes. That's expensive. Now, if I hear it right, if I hear it right, what you really got from Brookie was some, let me call it an island of love within all this criticism and abuse from your parents, here was a place you could go, which was love, love from the outside, perhaps. Yes, that's Brookie, okay. Love from the outside, but love that you would feel, love where you would feel accepted, wanted. Um, and so I, I'm correct? Yes, correct. All right. And then that got taken away now let's go back to this let's go back to brookie for the moment okay what you are getting there as a young dave is love from the outside brookie yes yes okay. yes at that age you are too young i'm supposing you are yes. too young to really understand the idea about radiating love and getting love from the inside. You are getting love from the outside. You were getting criticism and abuse from the outside elsewhere. So you're used to getting everything from the outside. Yes. Spend a few moments now and tell me, I want you to tell me what happens. Go back there, but focus not on the explosion and the disaster of all of that, but rather on the feelings that you would get out from the outside, from Brookie. Right. Get those feelings and see, see, I'm expecting resistance here, but you tell me when you go through this, okay? Um, but see if you would, can, go ahead. He, he, 
the feeling I had was he really cared for me very deeply and 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 he was very gentle and very kind and loving and uh, very interested in me and uh, like nobody else in the world in my world yes and 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 it, i was a sure thing and i could go to brookie and say hey my airplane that you made broke uh, he would immediately stop everything <laughs> and fix the airplane or whatever you know and okay. that was not available anywhere in my yes. world yes yeah and in a way that's how it is now there are other sources of love like brookie okay you may not know where they are but for the moment but there are other sources out there i would be one of them by the way at least i would hope okay but there mm -hmm. are other sources of love for you but you're being very selective not letting them in or letting them in selectively always worrying about when's the explosion going to happen when's it going to when is it going to get taken away? Yes. When is this person going to die or, or somehow or other not like me anymore for some unknown reason at the moment? Okay. Yes. When am I going to be rejected? I can't get too far into this because the pain on the other end. Okay. Now, now let's, I'm going to shift a little bit. I got another little, go ahead. Okay. There's a piece of this uh, that I that I feel I have to share, but I think it's going to have to be cut out because uh, of the nature of it. But it's very related to Brookie and the basement. All right. Well, now, do, you, okay, do you want just, me to av avoid that or no? No, I want you to go on to it. But I want to, I want people listening in to know that because of its possibly personal nature, I may cut that part out. Okay. So okay. so go ahead. All right, got that. I'll cut that part out. And we, so we are now resuming. Okay. I may allude back to it, but in ways where we will maintain okay. privacy and, and so on. Okay. okay, so I understand that now. And you were using this over, overwhelming need and you emphasize with big, big term overwhelming need for for brookie and his his love and so on and so gone okay that plugs into what we were talking about all right yes. so and go ahead and at the same time while i was looking for that love from brookie my parents specifically categorically were prohibiting that same uh, response situation type of love uh -huh. okay so it it enlarged emotionally mentally the concept the connection yeah it just okay you know. got it now what comes to me is there's a piece in here that i'm hoping we can really, really, really get into and capitalize on. And that is not so much your response to Brookie, that is the love that he gave you and the attention that he gave you and the help that he gave you and all of that. Yeah. That's shift for the moment. And I don't know Brookie. I never met him, obviously. Okay. But I'm I'm hearing someone who has probably developed the ability to generate or radiate love from within. He probably does this not just with young Dave. He probably has lots of people that he's always helping to drop what he's doing and help them and so on. He's generating love within himself. How accurate would that be as far as you can tell? Yeah, it, it's very accurate because on the other side of the same coin with Brookie, his wife <laughs> gave him such a hard time, hated him, you know, and uh, but you're right, Brookie was 
that way, I think with everybody, uh, very loving, kind, you know, patient. Now, what's interesting, I, I don't know the whole story here, but you were saying kind and patient. And so he must have had a lot of friends, and a lot of Daves out there who really, who really, yeah. re really reveled in Brookie's presence. Yes. Yes, but I, I didn't see any of that. I only saw his love for eight year old Dave. OK. All which right. was so precious you yes. know okay now you're also telling me that his wife <laughs> didn't like him or something like that okay yeah but here is brookie living with a woman who apparently is criticizing ridiculing not liking him and you know not giving him love let's put it that way okay mm -hmm. yet able to move right by that apparently and be a great friend to Dave and all the other days and other people that he was wanting to help in this world. Mm -hmm. So here is someone, at least as portrayed, that has developed the ability to radiate love from within. When you radiate love with them in and you're married to somebody who's constantly criticizing you, you can move, you can, you can absorb it and move on. You hear the criticisms and you can become say, well, she needs, she needs help. I'll uh, do what I can. Okay. Um, but it doesn't make him grumpy so that he doesn't treat you well. It doesn't make him grumpy so that somebody else, he says, I don't want to deal with your stuff. You know, he didn't, am yeah. I right? Right, right. Yeah. He radiated love within. Now, I don't know. I'm, I, you know, you tell me if that's on point. Yes, you, you're right on point. Okay. It's it, and now as I look at back at Brookie from this age to when I was eight, I, it, it, it makes him even more remarkable. You know, to I wish I would be able to do the very thing that he did, did almost in a very natural, easy kind of a way. He did, you know, he didn't have to work at it. He just lived it. Yeah. You okay. Know, the, That's where we want you to be. Would I be right? What, yes. And Gary, the thought came to mind, if I could be at that place that we just talked about with Brookie, that would make my whole lifetime worthwhile. My everything. Well, gee, why don't we try it, Dave? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I'd like to <laughs> retry it, you know, going in the army and all that kind of stuff happened. <laughs> but uh, I, I sure would like to get to that point. And I often think that we're given these as stumbling blocks to turning to turn them into stepping stones to get us to the place where we can work out things like this for our yeah. own purpose our own good our own life and people well, in our life yeah but when i say let's give it a try i don't mean for you to go back to the army and all that stuff i mean for you to shift your perception from i need to get love from outside myself to yes. being Brookie, who apparently didn't need to get love out there. He was, he was giving it. And when you give it, that's how you get it yourself. Yes. You cannot get something you don't give. And that was the big lesson from your radiating love is I want to have love. And the best way to get it is to give it. Because everything we give, we get back, you know, sometimes in spades, you know, yeah. doesn't well, matter if it's positive, negative. So I, that's been one of my big motivations, you well, know. Well, let's pick up on that because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind you, you were telling me earlier about your radiating love and you, you go into the, the store and, and the lady, you know, takes you six aisles back or whatever. You're radiating love. People are picking up on that. Then that doesn't mean everybody is going to do that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But generally exactly. speaking, people pick up what you radiate and you, 
you lift their day by your mere presence. Okay. Yes. Now, here's what we want to do. You're in this, let's go back to the palace of possibilities. You're in your room. There is this staircase that leads up to all these glorious rooms where you have love generated from within. And it's, but they're scary rooms because if you get there, what if somebody, you know, pulls the curtain or, you know, or pulls the rug out from under you or something or other. So we're going to do it in a, in a special way. We're going to take this room in the basement and we're just in our, our mind going to lift it up into the lobby area, the first floor. Okay, of the balance of possibility. No more staircase. But you do have a doorway that goes from the room you've been in to the more expansive radiate love from within palace of possibilities and everything else there. Okay. But there's a door and you have a choice. You have a choice. You can go to, you can stay in your room if you want to, because it's safe in there. You can, you can be angry and all these other things, you know, uh, uh, you know, and have all the other problems you you got, okay, and feel worthless. I mean, all that's, you know, it's still your choice, okay. Or you can walk out the door. But see, the nice thing about this particular arrangement is that if you walk out the door into this more expansive, brooky type love. And you don't like it, you can go. Through, you can go back into the. It's not a, an irreversible thing. You can go right back into your room if you want to. Okay, <laughs> so so you can go out there and stay a little while, stay three seconds, five minutes, forty years, <laughs> whatever you want. But you can you can always go back in if you want to. Okay, that is your perceived. I'm going to underline that word perceived safety. It's not really safe, but your perceived safety. All right. So, mm -hmm. unseen therapist is now in the room with you. Your own room. The one that has I am worthless on the wall and has I love you, Dave, on the wall. And outside that door, which is open, it's wide open. All I have to do is walk out of it. Is Brookie. In fact, Brookie is standing outside the door and he's got his arms open. Come see me if you want to. Come be me if you want to. If you want to. If you don't want to, it's okay. I'm here whenever you want. So there you are in the room with unseen therapists. You're looking out the door and there's Brookie and all he represents the palace of possibilities. Unseen therapist says, okay, at this point, Dave, you've probably seen me as some entity out there someplace that you invite in. But in reality, I'm within you. I'm always there. I'm covered over by a bunch of guilt and anger and grief and fear and stuff like everybody else. Okay. I'm in there. Allow me in your imagination to blend now within, within you, instead of you know, sitting beside you or somewhere else in the room. Allow me just to blend in. So now I, I'm part of you. All of my love is part of you. You are looking out of your eyes, which are also my eyes, the unseen therapist eyes. Spend a moment doing that, Dave, and tell me if you are able to do it if you get resistance tell me where you are on that piece go ahead spend a moment allowing the unseen, unseen therapist to blend within you and tell me if you're getting any resistance to that or able to do it easily whatever just tell me well right away i have the <laughs> resistance of the unseen therapist getting too close to to me because i know she is for uh, love you know and even though i want it it's scary it's 
I'm going to be hurt in some way. And that doesn't academically make any sense. Yeah, okay. Well, but, yeah, but we're interested in how it feels, okay? So, I mean, that's, and so that's really good feedback. That's really good feedback. So, can you put her in there anyway, even though she's uncomfortable for the moment? Sure. All right. Now, you haven't left the room. You're still there. You're looking out the door. And there is Brookie. Brookie would like to have you accept her without the resistance. He would like to accept, except the unseen therapist without resistance. Because he knows once you do that, then you'll be more, a lot more like Brookie because Brookie's already done that. Right. So he's outside and you're, he's standing just outside the door and you're on the, in the room side of the door. You're probably three feet apart, okay? The doorway being between you open doorway being between you. Tell me whatever comes to your mind, Dave. What advice is Brookie giving you? Well, Brookie's saying, it's okay, Dave. You're safe. You can come out. I'm here for you. And at, at the same time, still the three feet inside the door, I feel so afraid. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I see, I feel so afraid of the unseen therapist. All right. Because, because she's so loving and I'm, I'm scared to death. You All know, right. I, my, my anger comes up, you know, and I, part of me wants to say, get out of here. You know, right. and right. and that's not really bottom line. It's not really uh, the truth, but well, it's it's in your way. That's for sure. Okay. Yes. So, so do this for me, if you would, Dave. Sure. Give me some kind of a metaphor for that anger resistant feeling. It was a brick wall that I built when I was 14. I literally had no idea what I was doing, but it, after I had been totally blown away, uh, betrayed, hurt, whatever, by four, my four best friends, or at least that night in my bedroom at 10 o'clock at night in the apartment above the store, I built brick by brick by brick a wall within myself and right. I could see it and I could feel it, the purpose of which was to protect me from ever being hurt or exposed like that again. Yeah. Ever. Okay. So, so it's that brick wall and thank you for that. It's really good, Dave. It's that brick wall that we need to remove, shift, dilute, change float off into the cosmos or whatever uh, yes okay so there we have this brick wall all right now we're going to give this brick wall to unseen therapists which you can imagine being within you as well as without you outside of you someplace you can be both places easily enough okay mm -hmm. and let's imagine her out in the room in the room someplace, as well as within you, but she's in the room and she's represented by just a, a ball of floating golden light, understanding light, loving light. She doesn't have any walls surrounding it, it's just a bunch of light. You can move your hand right through it, no walls or anything like that. And if you move your hand right through it, you know, it really feels good. You know, that's all nothing but love, okay? But there she is. And now we have our brick wall. The brick wall that says, I can't go through this door, Brookie. Because I have to leave the wall behind. Or this wall is in the way. I can't really do it. The wall is my 
protection. I can hear Brookie saying, it's not your protection, Dave. It's your key. It's your key to the bliss you really deserve finally. It needs not be there anymore. It is a fiction that you have developed for your own protection. But that's what he's saying. It may or may not land with, yet with you. But what we're going to do is we're now going to give this wall, float it over to the unseen therapist. Into the ball of light it goes. You can watch it go into the ball of light. In fact, it's going to be in two places. It's going to be right there in front of the door, keeping you from going outside that door. And a replica of it, exact replica, is being given to the unseen therapist. So whatever happens with an unseen therapist also happens to the, the brick wall in front of the door. So you watch the brick wall, its copy, floated off into unseen therapist ball of light. And you watch it and it disappears or it floats into this understanding. See, under, unseen therapist doesn't criticize any of this. She understands why that would be there. Yes, she also understands that it's in your way. It's a fiction. It's an eight-year-old or a young, youngster old creation that you did to protect yourself at the time. She understands that. So you're watching the wall within her and there it is, there it is. And the uh, bricks in the wall, well, the mortar between the bricks seems to be disintegrating some. Doesn't really need to be there. Slowly disintegrates. And the bricks themselves then are not held together anymore by this mortar, this cement. And they start to crumble. And as they crumble, they start to turn into sawdust. Little bits, or I should say sand in this case. Bricks turn into really small little pieces of sand. And the sand then occupies a, what do they call that? Uh, where the sand is in a time thing and it flo flows from the top to the bottom. What is that? What is that called? Do you remember? I can see it. Uh, okay. A timer. timer. Well, it, it's like a timer. Yeah, it's like a timer. Mm -hmm. And you're watching it. And as the, as the sand, sand goes from the top part through the narrow, narrow part down to the bottom, your resistance to walking out the door starts to shift with it. And you watch it. And then you look at the wall in front of you. And you watch it, the timer thing is there as well, instead of the brick wall. And you're watching it, and you're watching it. And Brookie then says, this will go on. The timer will go on. The hourglass, it's called. The hourglass will go on until you're ready for it to go all the sand from all the top to all the bottom. And when that's ready, then it's time to walk out the door. So let's spend a little more time in your own imagination. We're going to repeat some of this. There's the brick wall. It goes into the unseen therapist's lovely understanding ball of light. Where it is shifted into the hourglass, the timer, sand. And we go back again. The wall and all that it represents 
shifting to unseen therapists and her understanding and love and all this. Hourglass. And then do it again. Just in your mind, do it a time or two or three or however, however far you want to go until such time as you've gone as far as you think you can go and then just open your eyes and we'll talk. What I'm feeling, Gary, is a, a slight pain in my heart uh, in uh, seeing that uh, mortar dissolve into sand and fill the timer and so forth. And, uh, in other words, the, the whole wall going is painful heart level. All right, good, thank you. Let's do this, let's add this in here. Let's take your heart pain, the pain in your heart. What level, on a scale of zero to 10, what level would you give that right now? Seven. Seven, okay. So let's give the pain in your heart. Go ahead, you wanna do something with the phone? Put the phone in the drawer here. Okay. All right. Um, so take the pain in your heart and just hand it to unseen, the golden ball, the light ball, and just let her spend time with it. Imagine the pain going throbbing, da, 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 da like that. And then with her love and understanding, ta 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 Do that a time or two or three. Or however often you want. And tell me what's happening with the pain. Is it getting worse, better, what? It seems to be getting better. Keep going. The unseen therapist at one point said, I'm making it better, the pain in your heart, gently releasing it. And it seems now to be at a level of two or one, the pain. Okay. Well, all right, while that's going on, Look out the door now. There's Brookie. Do you see the wall or not? There's, there's something of the wall there. Yeah. It's not as it's not as solid or clear or sharp as it was before, but it's sort of like a, a haze of the brick wall. All right. Just all right. Slight. Well, Let's do this. Let's do this in your imagination. With your hand, just put your hand on that haze of a wall and move it aside. So you can you can walk through the door to Brookie and the Palace of Possibilities. And actually walk through it. Not all the way through it, and you know you're a hundred feet past and into the, all of that, you're just sort of putting your toe in the water, so to speak, okay? Walk one step into it. One step, just one step. Knowing you can go back into, the, into your room, put the wall back up, but just walk one step into it. And there's Brookie. Says, thank you. But how does that feel? Are you... Are you resisting? Are you going? Uh, no, what, I'm, what I'm feeling when I take that one step, it's an awareness that I'm moving into a bright light, into the uh, lightness. The, the, it's like coming to life. It's like coming out, a chicken coming out of an eggshell, you uh -huh. know. 
uh, almost like being born into the life I want. Is it is it scary? A little bit, yes. Uh, get, on a scale of zero to ten, how scary is it? Maybe four or five. Okay. Well, just stay there for a little while. Just only one step. That's it. You can always go back in. Your 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 perceived safety is behind you through back through the door. Okay. Yeah. But just stay there. Let unseen therapists join you. Let Brookie and unseen therapists then, I'm thinking, sing a song to you. Okay. What would that song be like? It would be happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> Does that feel good? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, right. because it carries with it safety. All right. Now, from where you are, one one step outside your room into the glorious palace of possibilities. Let your eyes go all over that, as far as your eyes can see throughout this massive palace of joy, love, and so on. Look out there and try to find, if you can, anything that would be scary. A witch with a crooked nose uh, at a distance and has some cobwebs and... Uh, Seeming to be a something of a distance. I don't know how much distance, but <clears throat> all right. Well, but it's in the it's in the shadows of the the room. You know the well, the possibility. Yeah, those would be your manufacture, obviously. Yes. 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 Like like. You made them up, but they represent possible scary, scary features. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. Open your eyes, Dave. Let me talk to you for a little while, okay? Okay. The way I see this exercise that we just did would be like ones we did before where you want to go back and go over it again. But this one was longer than the other. There was a lot of reframing in it. We had the wall come up. We had Brookie come up. We had a lot of things that showed up here. And I'm listening to Unseen Therapist all the time, and I'm reframing, 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 reframing. Now, to begin with, I don't expect one session to just vanish all of this. Mm. We've had too many years of conditioning along these lines. All right. What we're hoping for is a good start. It feels like we got a good start, but that, I don't want to impose that. Does that seem right or? That's right. You're right. You're right. It is a good start. Okay. Now, I think if you, if you replay this, because we're recording it for you, if you replay this several times, I think each time you do that, my hope would be that it's going to start, these things are going to start chunking into place more and more and more. Your comfort with going outside that door will get more comfortable, more comfortable. The crooked nosed witch and the other cobwebby things out there will start to fade and the idea of radiating love which you've already had experience with is something you'll do more and more voluntarily i would think starting to generate love from inside 
and shifting all of this. That's why I thought anyway. Mm. Tell me, yeah. tell me. I'm, that sounds I, right. Yeah, it, because uh, the radiating love will be a bridge to move and let go of the negative, fearful, angry thoughts that I've been conditioning myself with over a lifetime. Yeah, they're, they're protective stuff. I'm, I'm going to get angry at this. That way I don't have to let it in. Okay. No. Uh, it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. anything else you want to go over while we're here? I can't think of anything else. No, I think okay. you, you, I think you pinpointed it very well. Thank you. Okay. Well, let me, let me, let me know what happens. Let me know what happens. Okay. Okay. I will. I will. And for those listening in, uh, if you want to rerun this several times, like I said to Dave, please do. Please do. If you want to replay parts of it, because that fits you better than other parts, you know, do that as well. Do that as well. Okay. So, uh, until next time, listening audience, and to you, Dave, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.